And we're back in this lovely prep room. Not stoked about being back in this room, but it is what it is. I just want to get the bay repainted and I will feel so much better about the car and feel like we have a better platform to rebuild from. And then it won't just look as depressing either, being all burnt up. So I'm back in here and I'm going to be starting on the engine bay prep. I just need to dive into it because I'm really not looking forward to this, but it needs to be done. I'm just gonna take the DA and really just sand down everywhere that's burnt and most of the existing paint. You know, a lot of heat was generated in here. So even if the paint isn't completely burnt, it could still have started bubbling and just be compromised. So basically gonna be starting from the ground up with this thing. And I just need to get started because I'm gonna keep putting it off if I just don't do it. is just peeling up. So before I go in trying to sand off areas, especially like the really burnt areas, is I'm gonna have to take this down to where like there was never paint. Um, before I do that, I need to just go in and peel off the areas that can be peeled off so I don't waste time sanding something that's already lifting. It's coming out in big chunks just because it was so compromised from being so hot. So I'm gonna go around the bay and just get pieces like this off first and then go sanding after this. This is mostly clear. You can see the neon underneath that. So I'm going to spend time doing this first and then go in for sanding. This is where sandblasting would be really amazing right now. Okay, now we're talking. Air, this will go a million times faster. I texted Randy and I was like, Randy, please tell me there's gotta be another way. be enough now I got a bunch of the paint that was really really loose off with the air you can see all these different spots where it was coming off but obviously there's still a ton of compromised paint that needs to come out of this engine bay and be fully prepped for paint again now if the surface isn't good the new paint is not gonna be good I'm also discovering a lot more like really badly burnt fiberglass right back in here this entire area right here is just really really bad thankfully it's not really a crucial area or structural or you know important things don't mount to it I don't think anything mounts to it in that area it's pretty open and then our fender points the most important ones are all fine at the top so I'm gonna need more fiberglass repair on that side. This prep is going to take forever. And even taking forever, you know, I'm not gonna be able to get inside every little nook and cranny with 
a big DA, which means they'll be doing a ton of this by hand, which maybe won't be perfect, and it's going to take a really long time. I've been trying to think of other options. You can't use like a normal paint remover, or paint thinner, or anything like that to help because it's fiberglass and I've been told that that could compromise the fiberglass even further and then we just have more problems so these are just Corvette things, Corvette issues because most of the car is fiberglass. Where I've landed at for the solution is sandblasting or media blasting. Now, your girl is gonna go to good old Harbor Freight and I'm gonna get both a sandblaster and a soda blaster and we're gonna compare both of those and see which one gets the job done and this is definitely something that I can see myself using a lot in the future so oh no anxiety creeps up on me is this how it's supposed to feel tell me when it's over I got some place that I gotta be it won't leave my friends, hey, get out of your comfort zone. There was no one really at Harbor Freight that had experience with media blasting whatsoever, so I got an assortment of things that I'm pretty happy with and think this will be a good variety of stuff to test out. Basically, our level one is going to be our soda blasting. This was like $94 out the door. And the media for it is right here and this is going to be level one if this works just fine and gets our engine bay looking clean and all the paint off of it we will stop there if that doesn't work then we will go to level two and level two is our sand blaster or media blaster this was their smaller one this is the 20 pound one. There was no performance difference in going up a size to like the giant tank. So this will be our level two and I got two different medias for this. Both of these medias are the less abrasive ones. So the first one that we might try out is gonna be our walnut shell media. If that does not do the trick, then I also got this glass media to test out as well. There's something covering the front that has all the information, but this is glass bead media. First thing I gotta do is plug up all of the holes in the engine bay, mostly on the firewall back there, and then I'm also gonna cover up the rack and tie rods and probably our arms in there as well, because this stuff is gonna get everywhere. to be soda blasted. I basically just covered the entire subframe in plastic, taped it all up, and then for the holes in the firewall, I just like stuffed rags in there because I figured that would be stronger than tape that will probably just get ruined right when I'm soda blasting or sand blasting in that area. And we're gonna see if this works. I put plastic around the rest of the car just for safe measure even though we know this material is going to get all over this room which this room already has fiberglass everywhere this is the prep room so no one was too worried about it i'm about to lock myself in here and get started oh and don't forget to connect the other part of this hose i just had it open this is supposed to go right here Boom. This 
this is engine bay test level one. Yeah. I thought it was working and then it kind of just stopped working but I think I just need to put more material in so I'm gonna save my judgments until I add a lot more soda in the tank that might be part of the problem I need something to go in there and if a piece of paint is already loose I need something to go in there and rip it off and add more material up the PSI then see what she's got all right, there's like 100 times more media loaded into that thing now, and I'm just gonna use my full face painting mask, and I really hope this works. I feel like I'm in a winter wonderland. That's what it feels like. Oh man. Randy is going to kill me. <gasps> Bro. I mean, we knew it would be a mess, but. I don't, I don't think this is it. It's just not working aggressively enough. You can see there's almost no soda ash on this side of the shop, which is great. This side of the shop has got a little bit around here. To be fair, this fiber lasts everywhere. <clears throat> I can still like taste some of it in the air. But um, I feel like I would use this if I was trying to get maybe Maybe I could use it on the subframe. It's just the stuff that's really burnt and how many layers of paint that's on here, it's not aggressive enough. But I could see myself using this for other things, but it's not gonna do it or cut it for this job. It was working. Like, obviously, we made some progress. I look at everything here. I was able to chip away at this slowly. Now, I could probably stay here for a while and eventually get it. But my issue is when it's it's sitting in one area and it just can't rip this off. Like it'll sit here chipping away at this layer by layer instead of just getting it off. So you can see right here how it's slowly starting to do it. But I mean, this would take so much media to get this whole bay done. So I think we're gonna have to initiate level two. I started this entire experiment late last night, so it is now early the next day, and we are officially moving on to level two, which is our more traditional sand media blaster. And honestly, I think I'm just gonna go straight to the blast speed. So first step is assembling this thing. media blaster and first thing we're gonna do is test out our glass beads I'm just gonna go straight to using the glass beads versus the walnut shell because I think this will be 
a little bit more aggressive. I wish the sticker wasn't on here so we could read. So this is glass bead, 80 Brit, 50 pounds, super heavy. We're gonna give it a try. like the medium size tip even though now I'm realizing I probably could have used the small one but I'm gonna test this one out first and then if I need to put the smaller one on I can this stuff I don't know what I was expecting I was expecting to actually be able to tell it was glass but this is just really insanely fine glass because it feels just like sand it feels like really pretty sand but it is less, so hopefully this will do the trick and hopefully we have no leaks. Let's find out. Level two is where it's at. Now we are finally getting somewhere. It's taken the Media Blaster with the 80 grit glass beads to finally break through all of the built up, just burntness. Look at that. Now obviously this is a bit excessive because no, we don't need to go down all the way to, this is basically metal, but that's kind of, this is what's happening by the time this burnt stuff gets off. It's just chipping all the paint away, which is what I wanted. You're finding all this paint that's been compromised, and I just need it to chip all the way off. And the burnt areas were definitely the worst. That's what took the longest to build up. Now, I will say, if anyone else is going to do this on their Corvette, you have to be mindful of the fiberglass. Obviously, this is way more abrasive than the soda blaster so you can't just sit in one area forever on the fiberglass or you can start to break through that so for the fiberglass i'm really just keeping constant motion and watching every single layer as it comes off um, the pieces that were really burnt on the fiberglass are compromised already so you just want to be extra extra mindful there but it is working. I already went through one of the ceramic tips that comes with the kit. It actually just broke and it makes sense if eventually all this abrasive media is like going through it and it's just eating away at the ceramic. So now I understand why they had all these rows full of ceramic tips to buy. Didn't click in my head because I've never used a media blaster before, but definitely get extra tips. I probably had about 25 pounds loaded in there for the first time. I'd say that lasted, how long was that? That was maybe 15 to 20 minutes. So you definitely go through the material really fast. I'm loading up the other 25 pounds now. I'm gonna reload her up and keep blasting away.
I skipped that and went straight to the glass beads because I just, in my head, thought that the glass bead would be more aggressive and I didn't realize the grit difference. So the glass beads were only 80 grit and the walnut shell, the fine walnut shell that's supposed to be softer and better for like sensitive materials is 24 grit and that did work. Finally, stuff is actually coming off of this thing. It's just funny that I skipped using that one because I thought it was gonna be not harsh enough. Look at how much 10 minutes with the walnut shell did for this engine bay. Like, this is what I'm talking about. This is what we need to use to get this job done. It's actually the next day. I ran out of the walnut media pretty fast and my small media blaster was starting to get leaks in it. It was really, really annoying because the runtime, you just run out of material so freaking fast. So you keep having to stop, refilling it, and start over again. So now that I knew what media material worked the best, I decided to not only go all in on our walnut shell media here, but I also ended up going back, returning the soda blaster and the small media blaster that I had, and getting this big 110 pound media blaster instead. Now honestly, I wish I just got the bigger one from the beginning. I did it because I thought, oh, it's bigger, it's bulkier, it's gonna take up more space and be more annoying, but this one is so much better. The fact that it is on wheels makes this like 10 times easier to get around places, and even when you're storing it, it's just nicer to move around. This was mostly pre-built, which saved me a lot of time, which was another bonus. There is a price difference. The bigger one is about 50 to $70, more depending on when you did it because they're always having sales. I will say as a warning if any of you guys are going to be doing this for Corvette specifically you do have to be really careful especially with the lower grit walnut shell media on the fiberglass. That is just one thing to note because it is a lot more aggressive it is getting through all of our layers of paint and all of the burntness however you gotta move fast so you don't literally go all the way through the fiberglass firewall. It's really the only risk with using the more aggressive media but specifically the walnut shell is meant to be more gentler and it's a, more of a soft abrasive. It's used for historical restoration. I mean come on. And to be fair it does say fiberglass right here which is why I wanted to try this to begin with because this was one of the only ones that I found that actually mentioned that you can use it on fiberglass. I am geared up. I feel like we finally found the right formula and the right device to get this job done.
fit two and a half boxes of our walnut media. Also, one thing I didn't mention is that the bigger media blaster actually comes with the proper funnel. So this is super useful. And then this time when I was loading this media, I realized that you could take the bag that it comes in, it's already open, and like wrap it around the box itself. And then it makes it way easier to just pour straight into the funnel. So we got two and a half of these in there. The only thing that I wish both of the media blasters had was a quick connect for the air. It's so annoying to have to switch over your traditional fitting that you use for like everything else to then just not having it be quick release and putting it manually on here. It's not a big deal, but even the soda blaster had a quick connect on there. So that's the only thing that I wish this thing had, but I'm sure I can buy one and just put it on later. Anything that was really lifted up, I was able to get off, and the white paint isn't as bad as the neon yellow was in the back firewall, because the white is still like really adhered to the actual car. But man, was that a struggle. So first of all, it didn't come with the right tip size for this media, which I never would have assumed that this wouldn't work, because the smaller media blaster had no problem with this walnut shell media. On our big media blaster, the tip style is different, and immediately this kept getting clogged. Like even when I would slowly increase the amount of media passing through here, clogged, clogged, clogged. So I ended up taping this wide open and once it was on, I would just slowly speed the media in until it was just getting by and it really wasn't working all the best, but I was able to somewhat control it, but I couldn't ever shut this off because if it went a second with this closed, boom, it would get clogged again. So that was the first issue. It called around and they didn't have any bigger media tips anywhere, so I just had to make this work. I am completely through the three boxes of walnut media, and that is 75 pounds of media, and I really didn't finish as much as I would have liked to. Like I said, I got all of the really, really burnt areas, even like back in there, back over there, everything that was really crispy or lifting I got off. However, I would have loved to hit this frame rail and get it all cleaned up like this one, but this wasn't as necessary. You know, none of this neon right here is actually lifting. So that is good news. We should be able to just give this frame rail a light stuff and like give each wheel well a light stuff as well and be fine to reshoot it. Now, I have an entire prep room to clean up with my ocean of walnut media. I know it looks really intense. It didn't take me a long time to clean it up the other day. It just looks really ridiculous right now. So for the most part, I'm really, really happy with it. I still would definitely recommend getting the 
bigger media blaster. Randy's gonna come over and they're going to be helping me with just final prep before paint. I'm still stoked that I was able to get as much done as I did. I would not have been able to get into all those little nooks and crannies with freaking sandpaper. Like you can get in and maybe do a light scuff in some areas with sandpaper, but actually lifting up all those layers and layers of paint that was burnt was not gonna happen. So media blasting was the only way. Again, I'll give a big warning to anyone that is doing this on fiberglass to so just not hold it forever in a certain area because then you can start to go through the fiberglass but it was definitely the right tool for the job I just need to make sure I have the right accessories for the tool for the job next time but we got through it our engine bay is definitely looking a lot better a lot less crispy in the next video hopefully we'll be painting this girl and we can finally start to get closer to reassembly for this car parts update our engine should be back this week we're getting new seals to go through the transmission ourselves and make sure that that is sorted slowly waiting on other parts to trickle in so we can start this rebuild but this engine bay was so crucial it was so crucial you guys this is the home of most of the stuff that we're going to have to be rebuilding and putting back into this car. That is it for this video. We are one step closer to rebuilding the C6 Corvette and I will see you guys in the next one.